Welcome to this week's Ask Charlie. I thought we could focus on the garden this week. I've got a few more things to plant and I thought I would give you a little bit of the tour of the garden here. So the previous tenants were, um, he was a landscape gardener. They lived here for 15 years and they made this garden the magical space that it is and it really is amazing. It's not looking its best at the moment. Um, they um, they moved out a while ago, it's been empty for a while and it needs quite a lot of TLC to get it back to where it needs to be. But quite a few people have said to me, don't do too much, let it have a season, let it have some time for you to see, or let it have a year even rather than a season, let it have um, some time with you being there to see what comes up. So I'm just maintaining at the moment. I thought I would give you a little bit of a tour and we um, we would have a look around. So over here in this corner is my washing line and the hens. The hens are very happy here and I let them I let them out and I let them run free when I can supervise them. Um, I've put them away at the moment. I've put the dogs away because I just want to focus on you. We're going to do some planting as well. But the, that is slightly overgrown kitchen window. <laughs> That's our hose pipe. Um, at the moment, we don't have mains water downstairs or in the house, so I'm having to fill up bottles of water from there. But this is just a lovely kind of back space, not formal, just, uh, you know, um, yeah, hens, washing line. Um, but let's talk a little bit, a bit for a moment about the box hedge. So. We have really suffered with box caterpillar here, really suffered, and we have lost some of the box hedge, although there are some signs of life in this one. So again, I'm not rushing to take it out because it might come back to life. Actually, our landlord and lady were talking to us about box and the box here, and they suggested that we had it sprayed. We used uh, a company, uh, a garden company called Sam Perry, and I will leave them linked down below. They came, they sprayed the box um, for box caterpillar and it has worked wonders. And we've managed to salvage a lot of the box here. There's some that we have lost, some that is showing signs of life, which this is. Let me bring you up close and you can see what I mean. So there is some green in here. So fingers, fingers crossed, we will see what happens over the winter and into the spring the box here on this side there's some that has been damaged badly and other bits that are okay so again fingers crossed this isn't looking so good but again well hang on there's a bit of you there oh ow that was quite prickly <laughs> I don't know what that was I <laughs> think that was a rose thorn. um but again we might have to replace that but spraying for box does work I can I can testify to that. Hopefully you can hear okay with the wind. I've been waiting for it not to be too windy to film this, but it is it is a bit. But it's so lovely having these arches um, through here and happy hens. We have got the most magnificent view across here. Lovely bench there, and there's a ha ha, and the river is down there. So, you know, it is really, really a magical spot. And then we've got these formal beds here on both sides with the yew hedge behind and the box and the rose beds. And then the same mirrored here. So this is the formal part of the garden and it, the views are just magnificent from, from the house. Just looking out over here, it's just amazing. And then we go through here into the orchard and we have got apple trees so lovely yesterday i picked some apples and made an apple cake and it's just lovely having these trees right here we let the grass grow over the spring and summer and we had sort of wild flowers so we've cut it all back now but it was such a beautiful little area here and then there's an old well down there and then this is um, a gateway through into the yard, which we'll go through in a moment. I have got a plumber and an electrician here at the moment, so it's a little bit chaotic. 
um, and the yard. It's actually a little bit of a mess. It's work in progress here at the moment, but uh, I will just take you quickly. See, there's a lot of stuff that needs sorting behind me. This is the sunken garden or Billy's garden as it is known. And again, it has got the box that might survive broken terracotta pot that needs replacing. We're actually just using this as a bit of a store in here at the moment, but Billy gets to roam free in this beautiful, magical sunken garden, rose garden, or Billy's garden. I think we have to call it Billy's garden, don't we? But again, it's just such a magical, magical spot. And I'm really looking forward to putting trestle tables in there and being able to sit out here in the evening, in the summer, spring, summer, even now this time of year, although it's getting a little bit cold in the evenings and just enjoying this wonderful, wonderful space that we've got here. And then we've got this beautiful area at the front of the house, again, with the box hedge and flower beds here. And this has gone all quite overgrown, but I don't want to cut too much back. I'm just taking weeds out at the moment and then just seeing what is growing here and what I want to add to it and what I want to change, but I probably don't want to change too much. And then we've got, again, the box there. That one has suffered quite badly. Um, but hopefully, fingers crossed, it comes back to life. And then over here, we've got the lovely, lovely barn. I love this, um, this view from here with the barn roofs, but I need to get my gardening gloves and let's do some planting. Now, I thought that bay would work really well here. I am always using it to cook with, but I thought it would be something all year round that would look really smart and elegant in these two pots opposite the or either side of the front door. I love bay and it's something that I do use very, very frequently when I'm cooking. So it's just it's super easy to open the front door, pinch a couple of leaves and pop them in a pot. So let's plant them. I have bought these ones. They're not huge. You can get them sort of much taller. You can get them twisted around and all the rest of it. I just wanted something simple yet elegant. They will grow a little bit more. I can cut the bottom off to encourage more height and then start shaping them. And these were 19.99 from the local garden centre and I just thought they would work really well here. planted. I did once have some bay in metal containers and they dried out really really quickly. They didn't do so well. I find that actually they're much happier in terracotta. Now we're so lucky that we have got apples in the garden and I want to store them and get them to last as long as possible. So I got a cardboard box from, from the packing, from the move, and make sure that when you are storing your apples that they haven't got any bad bits. Like that one is just going to get worse. So I'm just gonna pop them in my box and use some tissue paper as well. And then I'm not gonna put them in the cellar because I think the cellar is too damp, but somewhere like a cellar, as long as your cellar isn't as damp as ours, um, I'm actually gonna pop them into one of the barns and I think they'll do really, really well there and we'll get them to last. 
keep an eye on them. Any mouldy ones, get rid of them. Pronto, I'm just going to pop some tissue paper. Just uh, in between them. Right, let's go pick some more apples. A wonderful box full of apples. I'm going to literally cover them up and the said Kenwood mixer and I'm going to go and pop them in the barn, store them in a cool dark place and they will keep hopefully for quite a while. So when I was buying the bay, I also got a few a few other bits for my kitchen garden and I haven't given you an update on how the kitchen garden is getting on. So that is the sweet potato, which is doing okay. Sorry, background noise. Carrots are thriving. They absolutely love it here, which is really exciting. Chives doing well and I've also added some thyme, some marjoram, and then that's a different variety of thyme. They, uh, they smell amazing and I love cooking with thyme. It's one of my sort of favorite herbs and need some marjoram as well. Very, very leggy mint that needs gutting back. Now, the rocket did not do well at all. Something liked it, nibbled it, so we needed to put a cloche over it. But the spinach is doing really well we've been eating it which is amazing and I've just added in some kale here that needs a good water and I have popped some oregano in this pot here and then my lettuces there are doing pretty well we have been picking them we've been using them so that is excellent so that's a quick kitchen garden container kitchen garden update so it wasn't too late in the year to put things in. It's never too late. You can always pop things in. So that is really exciting. Let's just talk about yew hedges because we've just had ours cut. They should be cut late summer, early autumn, not into sort of mid late autumn because then if they're not really well established, they can get damaged. Um, so a late summer, early autumn, for your ewe. If your ewe is really well established, it can be cut a couple of times um, throughout the year. Um, it, will do, it will do very well. So we've just had that beautifully, beautifully shaped. And the box is looking really smart as well. Look at that. And the box should be cut from May to June, never after Derby Day. That is the rule for box. And um, you don't want to cut it, um, to cut it back um, uh, if there's risk of frost. So wait until there's any chance of frost, uh, any, any late frosts before you cut your box. That's the rule with that one. And then for roses, it's just a constant game of deadheading. You can before the winter, if they're really leggy, um, you can give them a little trim back. I'm talking about deadheading. There's more deadheading to do here. There's a lot of roses in this garden and a lot of deadheading. Well, I haven't shown you my mounting block, which, um, which Nigel bought for me, but I'll share that properly with you in a vlog. These roses had actually have gone to rose, um, to, to um, rose hips, but actually I love some rose hips and these will work really well in flower arranging and um, decorating that I've got all of these, uh, uh, well, an abundance of rose hips. But if they're very, very leggy, like these, should be cut back a little bit. They don't like too much wind, but your roses should have a proper prune um, January, maybe into, into February, but you don't want any growth to start on your roses. Um, they need to be pruned hard back before there's um, there's, there's growth. So that is a 
tour of our garden. I hope that you've enjoyed it and I need to now go and water all of those things I have just planted but it's such a wonderful magical space here and I feel very lucky that we have inherited it as um, new tenants of this magical wonderful spot. I am really really enjoying living here. The views are just dreamy as you can see and they make me very happy just gazing out with that view over there. It is a little bit windy from time to time, but that view is just heavenly. So I hope that you have enjoyed this week's um, how-to, a little bit of garden chat, sharing our new garden with you and a few garden updates. I'm going to let these girls have a little bit of time roaming free. Come on girls, let's let you out. Come on. And looking forward to seeing you on Friday with a new vlog. Thank you.